Yeah. Have you ever heard of Troy Parfit? <laughs> yeah. Oh man, you laugh. So you do I've, know. I've I've interviewed him. The person who interviewed me, the host of this show, is Paul slash PF Young, who got his internet handle from CG or Carl Gustav Young, the Swiss psychoanalyst. Original, don't you think? The name of this video is, Is Jordan Peterson a Schizophrenic Nazi? Arguing with Viewers. Paul has made heaps of videos about Jordan Peterson, who he reveres. Although Paul did interview me, he didn't publish the interview, perhaps because it degenerated into argument, during which I accused him of being an alt-right shill. In the clip you just saw, prior to trashing me and my book, The Devil and His Due, Paul slash P.F. Young said that Donald Trump could not have been a far-right extremist because he didn't advocate for an ethnostate. Trump has referred to neo-Nazis as fine people, branded political opponents vermin, and said that immigrants are poisoning the blood of America. According to ABC News, in 1990, Trump acknowledged that he owned a copy of Mein Kampf, and his ex-wife Ivana said that he read a book of Hitler's speeches called My New Order, which he kept in a cabinet by his bed. After defending Trump, P.F. Young claimed that Joe Biden was a puppet of the globalist agenda. As you may know, the globalist agenda is an anti-Semitic conspiracy theory which posits that Jews only have allegiance to the global economy or some international political system, and that they work tirelessly to exert control over the world's banks, governments, and media outlets. The globalist agenda has its roots in Nazism. Hitler depicted the Jews as international elements who conduct their business everywhere, posing a threat to all people who are bounded to their soil, to the fatherland. Now, let's rewind. What's another thing that you think I'm wrong on? Okay, so uh, actually, it kind of has to do with uh, you and Jordan, or your interest okay. in Jordan. Have you ever heard of Troy Parfit? <laughs> yeah? Oh, man, you laugh, so you do I've, know. I've, I've interviewed him. No fucking way, really? Yeah, maybe like two and a half years ago. Never posted Okay. Him. And how would, you, how would your opinions change about him now? How would my opinions on who change? As you will see... Paul has a selective memory. Oh, yeah, well, maybe let's like uh, fill in uh, with the audience, whoever it is. So yeah, what, Parfit, go ahead, please. Yeah, Tri Parfit has a book uh, called uh, "The Devil and His Due." I've actually uh, emailed him a few times, uh -huh. um, and uh, essentially the idea of the book is that Jordan Peterson is a raging madman who is uh, schizophrenic, and he's been schizophrenic since his twenties. Uh, well, not that that's an issue, but, uh, he seems to, and he admits to it in his Maps of Meaning book, uh, where he had admits to having bouts of psychosis. Yeah. Yeah. So what's wrong with psychosis? After The Devil and His Due was published, Peterson's daughter, Michaela, admitted during an interview with The Times that her father had been diagnosed with schizophrenia in a hospital in Toronto by multiple physicians. Of course, she and her father denied the finding, but Peterson conceded to having no recollection of ever having been in the hospital because he was taken there by his family after experiencing some sort of breakdown during which he threatened to harm himself. After being released, he warned his followers not to report any unusual psychological phenomena to doctors lest they be incorrectly diagnosed with schizophrenia. Peterson has repeatedly told his adherents that mental illness does not exist. Um... And essentially that uh, he plagiarizes Hitler, <laughs> not Adolf only Hitler. from <laughs> Adolf Hitler, yeah, not only from, uh, not only from his uh, Mein Kampf book, which most people don't read, uh, and, but he also plagiarizes from uh, Hitler's Table Talk and I think a few other sources or whatever, this and that. Yeah. Um, he plays so, serial killers. Troy, Troy Parfit, Troy Parfit yeah. believes Jordan Peterson is schizophrenic yeah. and literally... Yeah. A Nazi. Members of the alt-right use phrases like literally a Nazi to signal that they believe Nazis do not exist. Sadly, this is a common view, one that has even been taken up by liberals. People have no trouble believing that communists exist, but argue that someone is a neo-Nazi and you're likely to be met with incredulity and scorn. The media is somewhat to blame for this phenomenon. Recently in Germany, 1.2 million people took to the streets to protest the Alternative for Deutschland party for colluding with neo-Nazis to draw up a quote-unquote master plan to mass deport non-Germans. And the nation's chancellor, Olaf Scholz, announced that Germany was under attack from the far right. 
in North America, journalists across the political spectrum seem to agree that this was a story worth ignoring. A genocidal psychopath is the exact word that Freud used when I said <laughs> Yeah, so he said, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, maybe not. Maybe he did, did he say Jenna? He said utter psychopath. Okay, he, yeah. he, said, he said, he. I believe he said he is evil incarnate. I have called Peterson genocide-minded, but not genocidal, because that would imply that he's overseen genocide, which clearly isn't the case. It's correct to say that I have called him evil, but Paul will suggest that I said he was as evil as Hitler, meaning responsible for the same sort of carnage and destruction, which is, of course, preposterous. However, Peterson is obviously enamored with Hitler's evil, and that's because Peterson is diabolical. And then I said, is he as evil as Hitler? Mm -hmm. And I forget what he said. I think he said yes. I'd have to double check. But that's... Sounds that's about right, Bucko. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so naturally, you understand why it's very difficult to take that seriously, right? Okay, but have you read the book, though? Which one? Troy's? Again, we see the selective memory. Have you read the book, though? Which one? Troy's? Yeah, Troy's book, of course. No. You're like his... I, oh, look up. You gotta fucking read it, at least. Well, I and talked to him for two hours, and he sent me a 40-page Word document filled with bullet points of individual quotes from Jordan Peterson. And did you read and, that? Yeah, I went through it, and not a single one was even remotely convincing. He didn't read the document. He merely went through it. It doesn't consist of 40 pages of quotes, and we didn't talk for two hours. He's making stuff up. So for example, so for example, one of the pieces of evidence that Troy Parfit uses to suggest that Jordan Peterson is literally a Nazi yeah. is that uh, Peterson said Hitler was an organizational genius. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what Peterson really said was... One of the things I've always thought about Hitler is that, you know, people... You have to admire Hitler. That's the thing. Because he was an organizational genius. Conveniently, Paul forgot to mention Peterson's exhortation to admire Hitler. Peterson has also said, And think about it, and be aware that you are like that, even though you don't want to think you are, right? Because no one wants to think they're a Nazi, but everybody is one, so... Look, 90, you know, it was 95% participation in Germany, and like, the only thing that distinguishes, you know, the average person from Hitler is that Hitler was an organizational genius. Two of Peterson's core messages are, Hitler was a genius, and, at heart, everyone is a Nazi. He sometimes adds that everyone is a Nazi who has a bit of Hitler in them, or everyone is a sadistic Nazi who could, future tense, work as a guard at Auschwitz and enjoy it. Peterson says that he could work as a guard at Auschwitz and enjoy it, that he has known this about himself since he was 13, and that he spent a lot of time thinking about it. Indeed, if Peterson thinks everybody's a Nazi, then it stands to reason that he sees himself as a Nazi, but then he has admitted as much on several occasions. In The Rise of Jordan Peterson, he compares himself to Hitler by showing clips of himself speaking interspersed with clips of Hitler speaking. Nevertheless, my argument that Peterson is not speaking figuratively and not warning of fascism's appeal, as he claims to be, is often caustically dismissed. Now watch as Paul insists that Hitler was a genius and implies that saying so is merely a fact. This will put Liam on the defensive because he doesn't believe that overseeing genocide qualifies someone as brilliant. Do you disagree I mean, with that? I, no, I don't. Uh, no, I don't agree with that. Because like, he, you don't think I Hitler? Mean, you don't th when it came to organizing the greatest atrocity of human history, arguably that 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 doesn't require a significant degree of capability and genius. You could say. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. No. Not. No. Not particularly. Do you believe? Other, do you believe other, if you other, say other, someone? You other you kids have done it too, you know. Like it's not like, and the and the blueprint for it was was in Africa. Uh, I can't remember where, but like basically one of the first genocides was committed by the Germans uh, okay. in the in the early 1900s, or it might have been in the late 1900s. Uh, so like, and he actually Hitler actually um, references that 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 specific uh, that specific event or okay. the, or the, that that time period. Do you so, think that because it already uh, happened that makes it easy to have done like Hitler was an evil genius in many ways yeah. obviously. I, I mean a genius I I you know like he the idea of like him working with a bunch of people and then him uh you know uh I mean I mean I think he was the 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 linchpin like he's obviously the guy that that got the ball rolling but uh, anti-semitism was already was already well established within sure. uh, Germany and different parts of the Europe. 
I mean, mm-hmm. like uh, I've read um, uh, not a biography, but basically a kind of historical accounts of uh, you know, most of the main uh, psychoanalysts. And uh, one of the things that struck me about Freud was uh, that he actually, they think he, he, he actually never talks about his childhood, but he, they think he grew up in a, in a, in a ghetto, essentially at the edge of, I think it was either he was, where was he living in Vienna, I think. So like when the, um, before Jews weren't even allowed to live in the, in the cities, essentially, they had to live on the outskirts of the cities. Um, and they lived in ghettos at that point. And it wasn't and until. people think Hitler came from one of those ghettos? Paul isn't the sharpest knife in the drawer. No, no, I'm saying Freud came from one of those ghettos. So the experience of, oh, okay. of anti-Semitism was already quite established. Young, too, by the way, also has a, has has a interesting statements and had worked, uh, I would say, slightly covertly. They say he worked at the CIA or the OSS at the time. If P.F. Young is smirking at the suggestion that C.G. Young worked for the OSS and helped the Americans compile a psychological report on Hitler, he might be surprised to know that Peterson spoke about this very subject in a lecture called Existentialism, Nazi Germany and the USSR, in which he boasted, falsely, that Hitler was elected, bragged that he won a medal for bravery in World War I, which saw Germany invade Belgium and France, and said that Hitler was a good orator, absolutely compelling, pretty damned good at reindustrialization, and had an aesthetic sense that was so powerfully developed that he dreamed of a post-war Germany where the Nazi arts would flourish. Parenthetically, the OSS found that Hitler was a borderline schizophrenic. Imagine that, a schizophrenic Nazi. But he had also had something to do with, uh, worked with the, uh, the Nazis as well. He actually... Uh, Karl a, Marx had some interesting things to say about Jewish people as well. I mean, yeah, but like we're talking about characters that inform... How would you... How would you oh, separate topic now. How would you describe your political views? That Paul Jung doesn't wish to discuss Carl Jung's connections to Nazism is unsurprising, given that they're well documented. Instead of asking about the evidence, he changes the subject. Peterson revealed he was aware of Jung's pro-Hitler phase when he said, quote, Jung felt himself pulled very strongly by what the Nazis were doing. However, he has denied Jung's Judeophobic period, ignoring the evidence and lambasting the biographers who presented it, calling them malevolent and clueless. Nevertheless, the evidence is clear. Around the time Hitler seized power, Jung repeatedly praised Aryans and denigrated Jews. Jung also complimented Hitler and oversaw a Nazified psychological association. This is probably what Liam meant when he said Jung also worked with the Nazis. Eventually, Jung fell out of favor with the Nazis, who threatened him, blacklisted him, and burned his books. He went on to help the OSS compile its report, And after the war, he published a series of essays about the psychological factors that contributed to National Socialism. Peterson has referenced these essays and probably sees them as instructionals. But let's return to Paul trying to change the subject by asking Liam about his political views. How would I describe my political views? Was Joseph Stalin as bad as people make him out to be? Uh, yeah, no, I, that's the thing. So like I, 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 uh, I graduated in philosophy well, an undergraduate in philosophy. So like, uh, I actually had been interested in Jordan Peterson when he first started like on the scene, whatever it is. Uh, but very quickly I, uh, you know, uh, realized he was a Nazi, not realized, he was, you know, like, like I sympathize with Troy's points. I think that he makes it, he does make a compelling case that Jordan Peterson uh, is literally a Nazi. Well, he, he, what I think he is, Cause that is his point. And I don't mean, I don't mean yeah. like, you know, oh, you're a Nazi for yeah, saying yeah. this. No, a, a member of the, a secret member of the Nazi occult party and all that shit. Okay. That's the thing. So I don't, he doesn't really say that. Like, so uh, from what I understand, Troy, he does say that. Uh, okay. Well then I would take a I soccer. To him. Paul is lying again. I have never characterized Jordan Peterson as a member of any organization let alone the Nazi occult party, which, it turns out, does not exist. Again, the strategy is to avoid the evidence, distort my claims, and make me appear ridiculous. Well, I mean, I've emailed Troy. We've gone back and forth about this, about certain things. Okay. Uh, I would think, I think a softer approach to his main claim would be that um, he is uh, signaling, at least, to characters of that type. Uh, characters of it, what type? Uh, well, characters who may have an interest in uh, the alt right, uh, you know, anti semites, uh, some crypto fascists, some neo Nazis. Yeah. People that hate Israel. Uh, Do you think Jordan Peterson is encouraging people to dislike Israel, or quite the opposite, given his affiliation with the Daily Wire? He means 
Jordan Peterson's affiliation with the Jews who were on the Daily Wire. And this is another common defense. Since Peterson associates with Jews, he couldn't be a Judeophobe, let alone a neo-Nazi. Forget that Hitler had Jewish friends and there were Jews who were Nazis. Forget, too, that Peterson has used the Daily Wire to discuss one of Carl Jung's essays on Hitler and to list, ecstatically, a few of the Fuhrer's talents. This, during a roundtable discussion ostensibly about the Book of Exodus, which the Nazis wrote about in their first propaganda pamphlet to depict the Jews as aggressors who went to Egypt to commit genocide. Like they had murdered the innocents in the desert back then, they could do it in Germany today. At the University of Toronto, Peterson lectured about Nazi propaganda pamphlets in undergraduate psychology classes. Well, I mean, I mean, there is a there's a recent article by these two, uh, I guess, academics, uh, Simon and Bickler. I was actually going to send one of the documents uh, to your to your listeners or whatever, to the chat. And I have the documents. Sorry. Yeah, I have. Yeah, I have my. I have the papers. No, no, no. Billy Clinton's very much a flying vampire. <laughs> no, no. Uh, well, basically, the idea was. Uh, they had this, this, this. Uh, I guess there's this, not, it's not necessarily a theory. I guess there's some empiricism involved with the the relationship between between uh, neo Nazis and neo Nazi parties and uh, the far right in Israel. So, I mean, as nice. crazy as that might look, it, there is there is relationships between those two groups because um, they have a common right. enemy in some respects. Which is uh, who? So Jordan Peterson supporting. Wait, who is yes, the common enemy? I mean, yes, yeah. You know what, Troy? You know what Troy would say about him uh, basically supporting entirely with the uh, far right Israeli party is this? You know, it's a uh, it's a win win for him. It's uh, chaos for the Jews and it's uh, murdering uh, you know uh, murdering Muslims essentially and Palestinians and maybe causing further chaos if not even a nuclear war. Something he's maybe. dreamed about. I would indeed say something like that, and although it may sound absurd. The proposition that JP is forever participating in schemes which promote evil is, once more, embedded in that thing called evidence. For starters, he has said that he's been studying evil since he was a teenager, that it's been his primary concern. Reconcile that with all the dating and dietary advice he dispenses, or his hatred for liberalism, or his declared interests in religion, mythology, Egyptology, and the occult, areas in which the Nazis also took an interest. Peterson's cover stories contradict one another. His competing mission statements fail to add up. I don't know what's in Jordan Peterson's head. Only fucking Jordan Peterson knows what's in his own head. And yeah, who wants to know what's there, eh? God awful <laughs> sunglasses. It's kind of scary. Um, yeah, I just I think uh, I think it's far more likely that Troy Parfit is wrong. I think I think maybe aspects of him might be uh, you know what no uh, i do i think if you if you if i uh, interrogated jordan peterson for like eight hours you know sleep deprived him eventually would he you know would he uh become you fantasize him, about that it? no of course not i don't know I wouldn't well do as that. jordan peterson says yeah. everyone has a dark side and a shadow oh yeah yeah, so yeah yeah it's okay to fantasize about that no, that's, no, you, no, you're that's not natural human tendency that. no 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 <laughs> i i i don't suspect you would admit to it no but uh no, I mean, put it this way. Uh, I would he would he would Jordan Peterson would never admit to it because then once if that happened, the jig would be up, right? And neither uh, would you, right? If you wanted to just single handedly kill Jordan Peterson, I'm not gonna, oh, okay, well, take a I, shot at him right now. He's okay. on. He's on. Look, he's on the stream hey, right fucking now. Sleep deprived makes me very uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I know. Hey, I never said I, was, I want to do these things with these. Uh, these, these that's fair look but, William, i i just i think that not a single sentence that parfit has uttered about jordan peterson's mental state is or his uh malevolence or his secret agenda is uh it's i'd have to believe the earth was flat he didn't read the book but the number of correct utterances i've made about peterson is zero it's i'd have to believe the earth was flat because i'd have to believe like there's a, like every single thing that Jordan Peterson has uttered is a lie, essentially. Mm -hmm. I mean, which that, is which, which would make which would which would attribute to him a level of intelligence and acting ability and psychopathy that I don't think a human could achieve. What about Hitler, the genius? Did he not achieve it? P. F. Jung is just another one of Jordan Peterson's stooges. As a cult member, it's his job to defend the cult leader. He may not understand that he's in a cult, let alone its nature. But he's clearly worked hard to arrive at his lowly station. Later you will hear him defend JP and say, 
and that's that, one of Peterson's trademarks, but then imitating the behavior and speech of the leader, who often portrays himself as a savior, is yet another hallmark of cults. For example, Hitler's cult. I, you know, the thing is with, um, even if I disregarded Troy's points, right, or I thought, you know what, like, uh, maybe he's not a Nazi, maybe he's just crazy. Um, sure. Even, even after, uh, even after the, the fact of that, you know, it's like his, his, his intellectual interests, and this is the thing too, like, I mean, now I'm going right back to his, all of his intellectual interests have either had associations with uh, Nazis, essentially, even like, I mean, every, Carl Jung, Martin Heidegger, uh, fuck, like, you know, it's like, and the worst part of it is, is his understanding personally, oh, not even personally, uh, academically, I don't think he's correct about any of, any of like his religious claims. I find his religious claims to be... Um... See, that's a more interesting conversation. Again, he's trying to change the subject. To elaborate on what Liam said, as I illustrate in The Devil and His Due, nearly all the novelists, academics, and historical figures Peterson venerates have connections to Nazism, occultism, anti-Semitism, narcissism, psychopathy, schizophrenia, or other forms of mental illness. For example, Dostoevsky was held up by the Nazis as a shining example of a Russian who understood the danger of the Jews. Solzhenitsyn was an anti-Semite, and Peterson is fond of noting how he fought against the Nazis. Tolstoy was also an anti-Semite, and Peterson cites his autobiography, Confessions, in which Tolstoy admits to being a narcissist and a homicidal maniac. Peterson cites Kierkegaard, who was also anti-Semitic. Peterson has written about Schopenhauer and Martin Luther, two figures Hitler admired. Peterson has scribbled about Wittgenstein, who was Hitler's schoolmate. Peterson has quoted Goethe's Faust and Milton's Paradise Lost, and Hitler quoted Faust and referred to Paradise Lost. Peterson has quoted and spoken about Nietzsche quite a bit, and Nietzsche influenced the Nazis and disparaged the Jews. Peterson has acknowledged Nietzsche's Nazi connections and likes to cite the will to power, a copy of which Hitler gifted Mussolini. Mercia Eliade, who Peterson used to claim was almost as big an influence on him as Carl Jung, was an occultist and fascist who denigrated the Jews and lauded Hitler for starting the war. As for Heidegger, whereas biographers and adherents tend to acknowledge that he was a devout Nazi who remained unrepentant after the war, Peterson has been more cautious, saying that Heidegger merely got somewhat tangled up in Nazism, like an innocent lamb that got snagged in some bushes. Peterson went on to say, to his students, that they would have gotten tangled up in Nazism too, because the movement appealed to people of intelligence. Here's another example of Peterson saying that Heidegger only got entangled in the Hitlerite faith. So, all right, so the two people we're going to talk about most are Maydard Boss, and he was influenced by Martin Heidegger, who was a great philosopher, um, taken to task often because he turned out to be tangled up with the Nazis more than he should have been, and Husserl, that's Ed, Edmund Husserl, who was actually, if I remember correctly, Mar Mar Martin Heidegger's teacher, that's Ludwig Biedenswanger, and they were, both of these two people were influenced both by Freud and Jung. Not only does Peterson ignore the fact that Heidegger stumped for Hitler on the radio and became the first Nazi rector of a German university, Freiburg, where he discriminated against Jewish students and gave the Zig Heil on campus, the five other people Peterson referred to have Nazi ties too. Moving past Carl Jung, there's Maedard Boss, who was the protege of Heidegger and once informed his students not to question Heidegger about his Nazi beliefs. As for Edmund Husserl, not only was he Heidegger's teacher, as Peterson pointed out, but the person Heidegger replaced as rector. Husserl could no longer be the rector at Freiburg or a professor due to Nazi racial laws because he was Jewish. And on top of replacing Husserl, Heidegger had Husserl's name removed from his book, Being in Time, fearing that, if he didn't, his beloved Nazi party might ban it. Concerning Binswanger, he had Jewish heritage and was interested in Swiss eugenics. Regarding Freud, he was hounded by the Gestapo and forced to flee to England. His four sisters were not so lucky. One died after the Nazis shipped her to a ghetto, and the others perished in the gas chambers at Treblinka. Even passing references can be connected to Peterson's preferred dark themes. For instance, in Twelve Rules for Life, on page 50, out of the blue, Peterson writes, Thank God for John von Neumann. Thank God for Grace Kelly and Monica Bellucci. I'm proud to feel unworthy in the presence of people like that. 
Why Peterson considers these people great, or lumps them together, is not made clear. He says he admires Newman because he redefined numbers, and a glance at Newman's Wikipedia page could provide a clue as to what Peterson means. During World War II, it says, John von Neumann worked on the Manhattan Project. He developed the mathematical models behind the explosive lenses used in the implosion-type nuclear weapon. As Liam touched upon, Peterson has been blathering about nuclear weapons for years, but not in ways cautionary or concerned. Rather, he has spoken about them in a state of mania. Von Neumann was also Jewish and moved from Europe to America the year Hitler seized power. His relatives followed him the year Germany invaded Poland. As for Grace Kelly, she was an American actress with German ancestry. She married Monaco's Prince Rainier III, thus becoming the Princess of Monaco, which, during the war, rounded up Jewish refugees and handed them over to the Nazis so they could be deported to concentration camps. Only a handful survived. The family that Grace Kelly married into was responsible for this. Her husband's grandfather okayed it and had financial ties to the Nazis. Concerning Monica Bellucci, she's an actress who played Hitler's wife, Eva Braun, in a production called The Fuhrer, The Adolf Hitler Story. I think I, I, I want to um, wrap yeah. this up relatively soon. And, and I, I appreciate you coming on and sharing that perspective. If Yes, listen, Jordan Peterson definitely talks about some uncomfortable topics like uh, the the capacity for murder and all the horrible things that human beings are capable of and the Nazi atrocities. So that's that. It's not that Peterson is a neo-Nazi. It's that he discusses uncomfortable topics like violence and atrocities. Uh, Tomas and, well, the man being accused, do you guys have any uh, thoughts about that? Um. I may be a lot of things. I'm not a Nazi. I rather resent that particular utterance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tomas? What He's definitely think? not a Nazi. I mean, I've heard a lot of uh, political takes from his that I find disagreeable. But it's, I mean, I'm more familiar with his uh, pre-coma uh, lectures and then just characterizations of him since then by the left, which over time I've grown more distrustful of, but from what I have seen, he does not seem like a Nazi. Tomas has never read Peterson and isn't all that familiar with him, but he's definitely not a Nazi, or at least he doesn't seem like one. Evidence be damned. Yeah, I would love to continue at some point with the Liam in the future to deep dive that, because I'm a former Jordan Peterson fan and I now find him pretty detestable in most ways, but I, I, I don't think he's like a Nazi. I, I think that's that's a bit of an extreme claim. Um, it's an extreme claim and it requires extreme evidence. It's like you, you'd have to look yeah. at Troy's book, you know, at that point and then make make what you will. I would go it. through it. I mean, I've, I've, I've watched his- You know what? Ro here, Roan, Roan, Roan. What's up? No, Rowan, you're not going to go through the book. You're not even going to talk about the book. Roan. No, that's, that's not my name. It's Rowan. No, Rowan. I got it from the Pokemon region from Gen 3. I don't know. I, listen, I, I, I don't. I played there. Digimon. I didn't play fucking Pokemon. Wow. Um, no, I'm just kidding. I didn't play Digimon either. I will, if I can find the email from Troy from like almost three years ago, he sent me a 40 page Word document, which is bullets from his like all of Jordan Peterson's lectures. And he's just like, here's an example of Jordan Peterson saying something positive about the Nazis ability to call it like, even like that. Oh my God, maybe he is a Nazi. Like to say like Hitler would like to say Hitler was good at organizing speeches and Hitler was good at manipulating people. He said Hitler was good. <laughs> it's like, okay. It, it's a very uh, 12 year old kind of view. Of things. He's talking about Pokemon yet. I'm the one with 12 year old views. If Paul had a reflective side, he might ask himself, why has Peterson made praiseful statements about Hitler so often and with such intensity and exhilaration? Why has he paid tribute to Hitler for creating a war economy? Why has he commended him for climbing the dominance hierarchy? Why has he habitually lied about Hitler's accomplishments? What's the reason he's glossed over the grisly fate of the Jews? How come he has done a friendly interview with the founder of the Proud Boys? Why has he said he can see Nazi as an aspect of his personality? Why does he have a painting of Nazis hanging on his wall? And why has he insisted he owns no Nazi art? 
Why would working as a guard at Auschwitz make him feel happy and deeply satisfied? Why does he never say that anything else would make him happy or deeply satisfied? Why has he characterized Hitler as courageous, heroic, charismatic, compelling, attractive, the great father, the wise father, the strong father, the benevolent father, God the father, the knight of the faith, the knight of the blood, the jovial father of the race, and a master of dark fire? Whereas other academics might note how Hitler excelled at pageantry or manipulation, Peterson gushes about such things. Why? Whenever Peterson boasts about Hitler's miraculous ability to give the Zig Heil from the back of a moving car, he imitates Hitler giving the Zig Heil. How come? Peterson gets all giddy when describing what he sees as the order and organization of a Nuremberg rally. What's going on there? And why does he hammer home the notion that everyone is a Nazi and has a bit of Hitler in them, and that if they don't think that's so, they're naive? Whatever is he talking about? Now, watch as P.F. Jung accidentally refers to Peterson as Hitler. Told, listen, I told Troy and Liam, I'll tell you the same thing. If Hitler, excuse me, Jordan Peterson, Freudian slip. <laughs> if Jordan Peterson really is Nazi, really is a Hitlerite, I want to know, because I don't want to be fucking supporting that. Um, so, What listen, would it do with the rest of your claim, like the rest of his ideas, you know? Like, like what if it came out like he if was? It, like, if I was convinced, if it turned out that Jordan Peterson was, in fact, this entire time, a literal Nazi, I would probably take as much mushrooms as possible and just see what happens because I'd go, well, my understanding of reality doesn't make any sense. As much mushrooms as possible? Since he has had such an influence on you, I don't think you should uh, radically just throw everything out just because you find out other parts of his beliefs that you believe are wrong because that it's just not just that, that other parts of his beliefs are wrong except it's literally a nazi tomas sure. i don't think you understand it's the gravity you can say there's a situation evil, whatever it's like, not just discussing people, evil psychopathic teaches, nazi sure Sorry. a lot of what he teaches in his lectures is derives or influence by for example martin heidegger who was a literal member of the nazi party uh, and he's considered yep. by many people to be one of the if not the greatest philosopher of the 20th century who cares if jordan peterson is a nazi Martin Heidegger was a Nazi, and he's a top-rung philosopher who inspired Jordan Peterson, isn't it? People with people ideas going... should stand by themselves if they're good, whether or not he's True. a Nazi. True. That is the level-headed take, Tomas, but I like the, if he's a Nazi, I'm going to have to take a lot of shrooms and try and break out of this dimension because I'm fucked up. Finally, some truth. I also would like to know if the guy's a Nazi. I, I have been wrong before when I was a bit more politically naive and a conservative back in the day. I, I, I was a fan of a certain Milo Yiannopoulos uh, during his little free speech stint. Turns out that guy is basically like a Nazi. Um, but so I, I feel like, though, I've, I've developed a pretty good sense of picking out people because I've, I've been in this space now for probably like seven, eight years. And like I, JP just doesn't fit that criteria for me. I would agree that Milo Yiannopoulos is basically like a Nazi. And after my book came out, I did an interview with him about Peterson because Milo read and was convinced by it. Indeed, he wanted to use the evidence to bring Peterson down, but by then he'd been kicked off every social media platform going, so he no longer had much of an audience. Milo does. People like Nick Fuentes do. Um, even maybe like a little bit kind of get into like Matt Walsh territory, you know, like for sure. Like those kind of people seem to have this kind yeah. of little aura to them. Well, he, I don't, I, I don't think so. Yeah. And Nazi is a very strong word and a very specific thing, but I, but like, yeah, I definitely think Peterson is on, he, he wants the best for people. I do believe that generally as a clinical therapist. Yes. He wants the best for people. And that's why he tells his followers that they can always leave the planet. That is commit suicide if they're not happy with the political situation here on Earth. It's also why he reminds the people he cares for that if they do commit suicide, those around them will be haunted by it forever. In other words, it's an excellent way to achieve revenge. And naturally, Peterson shows his compassion for humankind by pointing out enemies to his cult followers, for example, radical leftists, social constructionist educators, the woke mob, the Marxist Canadian government, the LGBTQ plus community, and so on. He's also doing a public service when he venerates and empathizes with mass murderers, holding them up as aspirational models to dim bulbs like Paul P.F. Jung. But then why would he associate himself with such, like, creeps like Matt Walsh, like, the, you know, the characters that he's on with uh, in his... Uh, I think he's he's kind of into the house effect. What's that? 
pushed he it may be the Kyle Rittenhouse effect. He was he was for a long time hated and but by everyone on the left. So the only people who accepted him were those on the right, those on the furthest right. Those are the people he surrounded himself with, and over time your environment shapes your ideas. So here, Tomas is admitting that Peterson associates with the far right, only he blames this on the left. And of course, Peterson still couldn't be a Nazi. Also the drug overdose and the coma might have. Now it's the drug overdose or coma that might have pushed Peterson to the far right. Tell me, how did you become a fascist? Well, you see, it all started with the coma. For years, Peterson has been saying that he's trying to rescue young, troubled, and impressionable men from the clutches of the far right. Any ideology, including that of the far right, is bad, he says, and his followers ought to move away from ideology by learning how to become individuals, take responsibility, help themselves in order to help their community, shoulder a burden, be tough, be heroic, and make sacrifices, which is what Hitler told his adherents, because he, too, wanted the best for everybody. Well, that's the thing, though. It's like if he was such a rugged individualist, then, you know, or his whole thing is about the uh, supremacy, or not the supremacy, but the... Um... Not anymore. He's more. I guess. He, he's explicitly stated that he's now taken on a more communitarian. Uh, Ugh, yeah, well, you know. Yeah, based by the way. Peterson has said he's taking on a more communitarian role, so it must be true. He has also said that he's a conservative, a liberal, a libertarian, and that he's apolitical. Of course, he's really a neo-Nazi, and to receive forty-five examples of him making disturbing remarks about Nazism, you can email me at. T -E -parfit at gmail.com. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe. Oh, and here's one last clip from P.F. Jung. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, as always, I'm interested in talking to those who disagree with me, uh, because I know I'm wrong about many things. I'd like to be less wrong. Don't be a P.F. Jung. Read The Devil and is due.